it. So let's pray. So Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you and I thank you that we are able to sit here and be under your word today. I know that it is the truth that sets us free in our lives. And I ask that the Holy Spirit speaks this teaching further than my words today. It goes into the hearts and of us and produces fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So I am part three on uh, this Holy Spirit teaching series that we have going on. And today I'm going to talk to you about the transforming power that happens by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a role in transforming you. When Jesus was with the disciples and he washed their feet and they had communion together and now this was going to be like his final words that he has with the, the disciples. And it lasts four chapters in the Bible. John 14, 15, and 16. And I was reading these three chapters and I was just trying to get a grasp and a hold on what were Jesus' last words that he would say to these guys in the flesh. It had to be of utmost importance, right? And I began to see Jesus' heart was being revealed to me in that moment of what he would speak to them, but that he also speaks to us because when it's someone's final words that they're gonna say, they try to make it of the most important that they wanna leave with you, right? Well, he talked about the Holy Spirit. He knew it was absolutely essential that they, the disciples, learn to rely entirely upon the Holy Spirit for guidance, for direction, and for their identity to be truly revealed on the inside of them. For them to know the power that they have that was going to come through the Holy Spirit. So Pastor Jason spoke on the gifts of the Spirit, and then he spoke on last week about the nudge, the prompt, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how the Holy Spirit reveals who you are and the power that you have. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> what is the Holy Spirit's role in transforming us? Because who are you, Right? Like, this is a question we always ask ourselves, who am I? And here's the thing about all of us in here. We all came to the saving knowledge of Jesus the same way. We all came with baggage. We all came with a past. We've all come with hurt. We've all come with pain and disappointments, victories and struggles. But the question I have for you right now is, who are you and what determines who you are? Is it your past your upbringing, your heritage? Are those the things that define who you are? You know, our culture today is very interested in figuring out self-identity, right? The journey of discovering individual identity. You can take personality tests, dream assessments, online quizzes, and it seems like everyone out there is searching for something to tell them who they are, where they belong, and how they can relate to the world. The world teaches and encourages us to look deep within. I, I actually Googled this. How can I find out who I am? And it said to get off to a remote place, get somewhere alone and search deep, deep within you and you are gonna find who you are. You know what? That is contrary to what God says. God says that when you look to his son, Jesus, that's when you find who you are. That who you truly are is Christ within you, the hope of glory. And the Holy Spirit's role is to bring that out in you. To take you to the next level in your life. To overcome things in your life. That happens by the Holy Spirit. The world says, find yourself. God says, find Jesus and you'll discover yourself. Amen. So the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pop in here to John 14. This is Jesus talking. And this is what Jesus says. And he says, and I pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and he will be with you. Okay, watch this. 
Jesus said, and I pray the Father and he will give you another helper. This word another is what I really honed in on. This word another is the Greek word alas, A-L-L-O-S, alas. And it has such a better meaning than the word another. This is what Jesus, this is what this word means, alas. The same of a different kind, one of the very same kind, same character, same everything, nearly a duplicate. What Jesus was emphatically saying to the disciples was that the Holy Spirit would be just as if he was here in the flesh with them. Nearly a duplicate of himself. If you follow, he was saying, and he says this to us today, if you follow the Holy Spirit, it would be just like following Jesus in the flesh. Oh, that's powerful. That means a lot more than the word another, right? So really, John 14, 16 could be translated like this. I will pray the Father, and he will send you someone who is just like me in every way. He will be identical to me in the way he speaks, the way he thinks, the way he operates, the way he sees things, and the way he does things. He will be exactly like me in every way. If the Holy Spirit is here, it will be just as if I'm here because we think, behave, and operate exactly the same way. Do you see that? That Holy Spirit is just as if Jesus was here in the flesh right next to you right now in every single second of your life. And see, the Holy Spirit helps us to grow and transform us by pointing us to Jesus all the time. Let's talk about Peter. Peter in the Bible, I think he's one of the best descriptions and demonstrations of Holy Spirit power. Because here's the thing about Peter, he's so relatable. Like we can, we can hear about Peter and the things he did and you can go, you know what, I get him. Because <laughs> he had some high days where he was right on point and then he had some days that he was just a hot mess. He didn't have it all together. And you know what, I'm the same way. Some days I am on point and then some days I am just a hot mess. And he's so relatable. And here's the thing about Peter, Jesus loved him. Jesus had grace for Peter. Jesus loved Peter. See, Peter, he was the one that had faith to walk on the water, but he was also the one that sank in the water. (laughs) Right? Peter was the one that was called the rock, but Peter was also called Satan. (laughs) Peter took a sword and he chopped the ear off of a Roman person, guy. (laughs) And Peter denied Jesus three times. My daughter Katie sent me this TikTok, and honestly, I just have to show it to you because it's just so funny. This guy does impersonation of Peter and of Jesus, and so I want you to take a look at this, okay? Now, if that only ministered to Logan in this moment, I'm good with it, okay? (laughs) Peter, but then the Holy Spirit came. And in Acts chapter 2, we read about how the 120 people were up in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit came in like a mighty windstorm into that room. And they looked around and there was like tongues of fire upon the head of each person. And everyone in that room was filled with the Holy Spirit. But Peter, the Bible's description of what happened to him was outstanding. The transformation that happened. He left that room and he went out with such a boldness and courage and he had a revelation of the word of God. He began to speak and to preach and 3,000 people 
were saved in that moment. The transformation that happened in that moment. 50, can I tell you, 50 days before that, he had denied Christ three times. Holy Spirit came and transformation happened in his life. Amen? The Holy Spirit transforms our life. Amen? And in Acts in chapter two, we can go a little bit further and see how Peter, you know, was transformed. In Acts chapter four, the, we, I'm gonna pop into this story right here. He was standing before the council and, and the religious leaders of the time because he had, through the power of Jesus, healed a crippled man. And I want you to hear the boldness of Peter because he was a transformed man. In Acts chapter four, it says, then Peter, and I love the Bible tells us this, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Like, listen to the tone, like it's good. He goes, do you, know, do you wanna know how he was healed? Like, let me just break it down for you guys. You know that guy that you crucified on the cross, that by the name of that man, this guy was healed. He's no longer crippled, he can walk. Oh, listen to the boldness of him. And in verse 13, it says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is for everyone? The Holy Spirit is for us. If it can come upon Peter and John and they can change the world, it can come upon you and you can change the world yourself. Amen? Amen. He walked the earth with power and authority by the Holy Spirit. If you were to ask Peter, who are you, Peter? He would say, I'm a recreated being in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit revealed Christ in me, the hope of glory. Right. And when Pastor and Jason and I first got married, we were so in love. We were just building a life together. It was all rainbows and butterflies. And then he would just make me so angry. <laughs> I mean, I never knew I could get so mad until I married him. <laughs> and I said to him, I was not like this before I married you. And then I married you. And I have anger issues. <laughs> And we, and we would, you know, make up, and I would say to him this too, I'd say, the reason I'm like this is because I'm Irish. And Irish, you know, Irish, they, they tend to get triggered. They get, they get angry. So uh, this is what you married, you know? And I began to realize that when I would get angry and I'd have these times of being mad, it's because, it was because I was overwhelmed. See, I was only 19 years old when we got married, and so I'm trying to be a wife, and I'm going to college, trying to get a degree. And, and when I would get overwhelmed, I would get angry, and then I would take it out of him, and then I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, we had our first child, Christian. And I remember having his first birthday party. And I did everything. I made the cake, and I did all the decorations, and I had the party, and I was angry. No one else knew I was angry. Jason knew. I was angry. And I remember putting Christian in bed that night. And I put him in his bed and I went into my room and I was so disappointed in myself. I was, I was just like, is this my life? Like, am I gonna be angry? I, I have a blessed life. Why? This whole day was stolen from me because of my anger. And I said this, I said, Holy Spirit, show me, show me what's going on in my life. And he said, it's time for anger to die in your life. Amen. And I said, okay, well, let's have a funeral. I'm ready. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> now, let me show you what Jesus did for me in that moment. In John 16, 13 and 14, this is what he talks about. And this is how the Holy Spirit operates. He says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, okay? But whatever he hears, he will speak. 
and he will tell you things to come. Now watch this in verse 14. He will glorify me for he will take what is, is mine. So Jesus saying, the Holy Spirit, he's going to glorify me. He's going to take what is mine. He's going to declare it to you. That's the Holy Spirit's role. I'm wondering if I could have two volunteers. You don't have to do anything except hold a sign. Two volunteers. Liam, you're so cute. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Can you guys come up here? Do you mind? Come on. I know you have to be on stage. No, not you. I love that. <laughs> okay, I'll have you be you. And then, if you don't mind coming over here. You know what, Sophia? Go ahead and stand right here. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, actually, I'll have you come up a little bit more. <laughs> John 16, 14, what does it say? That Jesus said, he will glorify me, and he will take, so this is Jesus, he will take what is mine, and he will declare it to you. All right? Holy, I'm Holy Spirit, by the way, in this role. I'm Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. He's, he's going to glorify Jesus. All he wants to talk about is Jesus. He's like, this is Jesus. Do you know who he is? This is Jesus. He is your redeemer. He is your healer. He is your victory. He's your joy. He's your peace. He's your restorer. He is your everlasting peace. This is Jesus. Holy Spirit is obsessed with Jesus. If Holy Spirit had an Instagram or a Facebook or a TikTok, every single post would be Jesus. It'd be like, Jesus healed somebody. Jesus rescued somebody. Jesus saved somebody. Holy Spirit is all about who Jesus is. Now, there's another thing about the Holy Spirit that he reveals to us about Jesus. He reveals to us the things that belong to Jesus. Okay? What belongs to Jesus? Well, Jesus has the name above every name. He has all power, all authority, all dominion, right? And he has all the promises of God. That is who Jesus, Holy Spirit is like, Jesus, you everything, right? Now, he's going to take what is of Jesus, that's Holy Spirit, he's going to take of what is Jesus, he's going to declare it to you. Now, I'm going to come over to you. Now, this is what tends to happen when we are going through circumstances and situations. Maybe we've got a doctor's report. Maybe we have an issue we're dealing with. Well, we tend to look at the natural, the loss, the pain, the struggle. We tend to look at that. I have anger issues. I am in overwhelmment in my life. Holy Spirit, what do I do? Holy Spirit goes over to Jesus and Jesus says, I'm your ever-present help in time of need. And he declares this to you. Holy Spirit comes to you and says, I'm your, he's your ever-present help in time of need. And what happens in that moment is deliverance happens in that moment. You are set free in that moment. You are set free. It's not a step one, two, three. It's the very word of God. It is the sword of the spirit. It comes in and it divides and it takes off the limitations that the enemy or the world tries to put on you. That is what the very word of God does and the Holy Spirit reveals that to you so that you can have freedom immediately in your life. Amen? You can give my um, volunteers a clap, thank you. How come the Holy Spirit always has the right answer? Because the Holy Spirit only looks at Jesus. See, this is the thing I should have done when she was up here. The Holy Spirit's not gonna look at you and condemn you. It's not gonna go, you're messed up. You got a lot going on, you're a hot mess. No, the Holy Spirit 
only looks to Jesus and he only speaks what he hears. He's the revealer of who Jesus is and what belongs to Jesus. And it says here in 1 Corinthians 2, it says, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. These things, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. He reveals the things of God. He reveals to us who Jesus is, that you are the righteousness of God, that you are healed, that you are courageous, that you have power, that you have dominion, that you are delivered. I was teaching, uh, actually I was at the women's Christmas party and a woman came up to me and she began to cry and she said, I, I, I want to tell you my testimony. And I said, okay, tell me your testimony. And um, she began to tell me that um, I taught at a women's Bible study last year, the end of last year. And at the end of my teaching by the Holy Spirit, I said, someone is being delivered from an addiction. And she said, when you said that, I knew that word was for me. And she said, so I grabbed it by faith and I said, Lord, I take that. I don't want this addiction that I have in my life anymore. And she said, I want to tell you this, that I was delivered from the addiction of alcohol. I have been an alcoholic for 10 years. She goes, but it's so much more than, than that addiction falling off of me. She goes, I have lost weight. And she goes, and my family life, my family has been restored back to me. She goes, I have had a complete overall happen on my life. In fact, she came up to me a couple weekends ago and she showed me her coin. She has been six months sober. She was completely delivered and Jesus healed her life. How did that happen? The Holy Spirit in that moment revealed who Jesus was. He revealed that Jesus was the one that would deliver her. And she, all she did is say, I'll take that. It wasn't a step one, two, three. She didn't have it to do anything to earn it. She just simply said, I receive that. And it happened in her life. Colossians 1 says this, and I'm gonna finish with this that he is Christ within you, the hope of glory. That this was the mystery that was hidden through the ages. You know that Abraham, Abraham didn't know this mystery. You know, Moses, Moses thought he knew it, but Moses didn't know it. It was hidden from Daniel. Elijah didn't know, Elisha didn't know. Oh, but you know. You know this mystery. It is Jesus. Amen? Amen? Oh, we know. We know something that Isaiah didn't know. We know something that Jeremiah didn't know. We know something that King David didn't know. Oh, he knew he was Lord, but he did not know Jesus. But you know Jesus. You know the power that is within you. It is in you. It is in you. It is in you. It is in you. Holy Spirit, right now, begin to reveal. You came in here today and you have hurts, pain, loss. The Holy Spirit is coming to comfort you and to take that, that pain away now in the name of Jesus. You say, I lack courage, I lack boldness. Well, Jesus was bold and he resides on the inside of you. So be bold like Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just praise you and thank you, Lord. And my challenge today is don't worry so much in trying to figure out who you are, but just focus on Jesus. 
and he will reveal himself greater and greater on the inside of you. And don't worry so much about not having the courage or the power because Jesus has the courage and the power. And allow the Holy Spirit to reveal that on the inside of you and walk it out in your life. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Wasn't that fun? I just want to ask you a quick question, though. If you were to face eternity today, do you know what eternity looks like for you? And would you have peace with Father God? Here's the good news. God has already offered the free gift of eternal life to anyone who will believe. You might say, believe what? Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for your sins. Receive him today. Make him the Lord of your life. And we do that with a simple prayer. Just pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, forgive me of all my sins. And Jesus, I believe in you. You're the Son of God who died for my sins and rose from the dead. Be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now find yourself a great church to get plugged into.